And apparently there's an agonizing decision somewhere in there. Ooh. Hello there, this is Christy Lewis from Dostoevsky in Space, and I am here with a year-long TBR, and that is for two different read-alongs. One is not the whole year, it's I think six months or something like that, and the other one is a whole year. Pretty psyched about these two readathons, and let's just get started telling you guys about them. So the first one is called Lord of the Read Along 2020, and that is being hosted by Krista at Books and Jams. What she's doing is reading The Hobbit and the three Lord of the Rings books. I'm actually not going to join in reading the trilogy and The Hobbit because I've read them so many times before, but I would still like to take part in kind of the fun hype about it. And I do have a bunch of J.R.R. Tolkien books that I want to read. So I'm planning to read four books by J.R.R. Tolkien in the first six or seven months of the year, however long their readathon is going on for. Sorry if you noticed it just got darker. I had a light on but it kept like shining like right here in my glasses. So the first book that I'm planning to read, which actually counts for both of the readathons that I will be doing, is The Silmarillion by J.R.R. Tolkien. This one I actually read like halfway, like there's a bunch of glossaries and stuff, so I actually did get like over halfway in the story a while ago. It was so long ago that I'm, I think I'm just gonna have to restart it because there's so many names. You kind of are following the arc of the ancient history of Middle-earth in this book and I was really enjoying it. I mean there is like one story arc that you're following and I think he, he didn't quite finish it but like his son or somebody, Christopher Tolkien, edited it for him. You are following the elves essentially and all these other beings that popped up in the history of the elves. But there's so many names that it's a little, it's like reading a history book, you know, it's pretty easy for the mind to wander. If you're sleepy at all, you can't really read it. That's gonna be a challenge for me because I'm always really tired by the time it's bedtime. I'm just like sitting there in my chair like, I need a thriller to stay awake. I just need to sit down and finish it as quickly as I can. Otherwise, I'm gonna forget the names. It talks about all these mythical beings, the creation of dwarves. Another book that I've owned for a while from J.R.R. Tolkien is The Children of Huron. And one of my friends, Corinne, read this and really loved it. So I would really like to read this one too. I honestly don't know what this is about. I thought it was going to be kind of like the Silmarillion, to be honest, but it's actually not, I don't think. She said it wasn't as, like, large picture as the Silmarillion, so I'm hoping it'll be a little easier to read. And I would love to read Baron and Luthien, which I gave to my mom for Christmas last year or the year before, but I don't actually own that one and I really want to get through the books on my shelves. I got this as a gift from somebody. The Histories of Middle Earth, Volumes 1 through 5. This actually sounds really cool. There's a bunch of cool titles in here. There's the Book of Lost Tales 1 and 2, which is probably the ones I'm going to read. It sounds like short stories. That sounds amazing. But then there's also The Lays of Belleriand, The Shaping of Middle-earth, The Lost Road, and other writings. And now we will move on to the other readathon that I will be doing in 2020. So this one I'm super excited about. I just heard about this one from Lucy the Reader and I'm a brand new subscriber. I'm so stoked that she's doing this readathon. It's called Classics Community 2020. The baseline of membership in this community is you read at least one classic per month. So I'm guessing that's 12 a year, not necessarily one per month. Oh, I'm gonna hate myself for choosing The City of God by St. Augustine. But one of my subscribers, thanks man, recommended this one to me and gave me the right translation. And it's over a thousand pages. I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure I'll be able to finish this, but I'm feeling okay about it because I read a lot of children's and theological classics anyway, so if I have to I can always pull one from those piles and be like, see I read 12 classics! And I'm going to call that one maybe my nonfiction November pick for 2020. And as for some of the children's and theological books that I am planning to read, just as an example, The Consolation of Philosophy, I still haven't gotten to it. I keep having to re-request it from the library. I'm always reading children's classics. I'm planning on reading Five Children and It by E. Nesbitt. I've never read anything by E. Nesbitt, but I just kind of glanced through the first few chapters and it's so cute. So cute, so cute. I really want to finish Democracy in America. This, I, I'm hoping this will be like soon that I get to dig into this. I didn't get to look at it at all in December. It's like a history class. Like it's pretty intense, but it actually inspired me to start a new novel. And then the other book that I want to read quickly is The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo. 
I did try reading Les Miserables. I got pretty far in it and then I got stumped when it was talking about some war because I was listening to it on audiobook. What war is this? And it was like a really humongous portion of the book. It was just kept talking about this war and I had no idea what was going on. I didn't finish Les Mis, but I am wanting to read this because Carla is reading it and I own this gorgeous copy from Barnes & Noble. I honestly don't even know what it's about. I didn't like the Disney movie. We'll see what happens with this one. It's gigantic. And I just got a huge Mark Twain haul from the library, which is super exciting. And one of the ones that I've been just looking for, hoping that it would be there someday, is a Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. And I found it! And then I also found these three. Okay, got it. The Gilded Age, The American Claimant, Puddinhead Wilson. Oh, maybe there's two in that one. Whoa. And the Personal Recollections of Joan of Arc. I've never heard of any of these, but I have heard of this one, so this is going on my list for this year. Honestly, I, I might get to these too. If Mark Twain is one that I can continually read at bedtime, then who knows, I may blow through these pretty quickly. <laughs> Don't know much about it, but I feel like the name is pretty self-explanatory, and I think I'm gonna love it. Honestly, I did really enjoy The Prince and the Popper. And then we have The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. I've never read anything by Anne Bronte, but I meant to read this in December, and then my plate just got too full. I really want to read this because Claudia at Spinster's Library said it was like one of her favorite books, and I told her, yeah, I'll read that in December because I didn't have time to read it for Victober either. And of course I didn't. So I would really like to read this. Whenever I tell somebody that I am going to read a book, I really mean it. And then we have The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky. You know I want to read this one because, I mean, my channel's named after the guy. So I have officially read a couple short stories, a novella, and Crime and Punishment. I'm hoping I love it as much as Crime and Punishment. I read Tales from the Underground and that one was like a really hard read, even though it was really short but it was brilliant and I feel like I don't really understand it very well, but as I read more about this guy and maybe some more about Russian history, I'm hoping that I can understand him better. So this is, I think it's about four brothers. Somebody murders their father. They each represent different schools of thought. So it's very philosophical, but it's like a courtroom drama, I think, surrounding a murder mystery in this family. It just sounds really dramatic and wonderful and philosophical, just like Crime and Punishment. Crime and Punishment was extremely philosophical and psychological. It got in the head of a murderer, and so you're following him around, and this one kind of sounds kind of similar to that. One of these guys is a murderer, I, I, I'm guessing, from the premise. It's also billed as a Christian classic, which Crime and Punishment totally is too. It's a giant, I have way too many giants on this list. But this one is just so highly anticipated by me. I will be not reading this edition even though I bought it. But I want to read the Richard Pavir translation because I've heard that that one's the best of Dostoevsky and I haven't read anything by Dostoevsky translated by him yet. And then we have Dr. Faustus by Christopher Marlowe. Now this one I want to read because I read this play by Dorothy Sayers, my favorite author. She wrote in Four Sacred Plays there was one play about Faust and the devil, and it was so amazing. I didn't really know the whole Faustian devil legend thing, but I loved it. It was so good. The play was so good. And I've just been dying to read more about that play and kind of see where her inspirations came from. And I know this has got to be one of them. So I would really love to read this one. It's pretty short. Thankfully, it's one of the shorter ones that I chose. So it's pretty high on my list because I love that legend. I'm wondering if maybe someday I could write my own spinoff, but I'm, I might be too intimidated because my favorite author already did that. If you don't know the legend, Faust is, he's a doctor, brilliant, tempted by the devil for various things, depending on the legend. I forget what the temptation was in Dorothy Sayers' translation. The devil tempts him and he accepts it. He makes a deal with the devil and you just kind of follow him after that. I'm not doing a very good job describing what these books are to you, but to be honest, when I'm doing a TBR, I don't know what the book is really about yet. I just have my reasons for wanting to read it. Sometimes it's the premise, but usually it's, I loved this author before, or somebody told me it's their favorite book. So I'm sorry about that. I'm not a very good TBR person. Maybe it says in here. Ooh, there was a historical Dr. Faustus. I didn't know that. Ooh, there's a chorus. 
like the Greek plays. I love Greek tragedy. I'm just excited about it. And I also have Death Comes for the Archbishop by Willa Cather. I just loved this short story that I read by Willa Cather in the best American short fiction of the century. I just really loved her characterization. It was amazing. I would really like to read this story about a French vicar who comes to America and he's living on the frontier and it's a time of a real clash between the Americans and the natives who live there and I really love those kinds of clashes in time periods because it really bothers me what happened at that time in history and I just always love to explore it a little bit more so I can understand it a little more. I feel like it's never as easy as people seem to think to make historical decisions and to solve historical problems. It's never as easy as people think. Anyway, I don't think that's really what this is about but that's kind of the backdrop. This is about one man kind of fighting the elements I think to do his job and obviously he dies. I don't know how he dies in the end but I'm pretty stoked about this and this author wrote My Antonia which is probably the most famous thing written by her but I would like to read this one first. It's supposed to be a really gorgeous writing and I really like gorgeous writing and then we have My Name is Asher Lev by some Jewish man. I'm sorry I'm not even gonna try and pronounce that. It's the winner of National Jewish Book Award. It's about one man's kind of clash between his faith and his art. One half of him is like really strongly religious and devoted to God and then the other half of him is I think a writer and he is having trouble putting those two halves of himself together because he can't seem to do that. It's an inner conflict. My English teacher from high school told me it was really good and I'd actually been looking at it already from Book Girl. Sarah Clarkson wrote Book Girl. Somebody that I was watching, somebody's videos mentioned the Clarkson family. They do a bunch of podcasts, like her and her sister and her mom. It has all kinds of book lists in it. Washington Square by Henry James. Now this one I would like to read because I read about this one in Mystery and Manners by Flannery O'Connor. I think I was looking at him already because it's like American historical fiction. Okay, I can see why <laughs> Flannery O'Connor enjoys this. It's a moving tale about Innocence destroyed. Yeah, that sounds like Flannery O'Connor. It's about a girl named Catherine who falls in love with the first man who ever professes feelings for her and her father is like, don't pay attention to this dope and she's like, I'm going to anyway because feelings. And apparently there's an agonizing decision somewhere in there. Ooh. It's set in 19th century New York society. I think I've read something else by Henry James before. Honestly, all of these are kind of who knows if I'll actually read these because Kate Howe is doing a Victorian book club and whenever she puts up a book for that, there's a strong possibility that I may pick it up. Any or all of these could be changed depending on what the book club does. And also from Kate Howe, I was following her on Instagram and she said that there will be a 2020 read along for all of the Port William novels by Wendell Berry, which have been put into like classics editions, like modern classic editions. And so I thought, hey, why not read Hannah Coulter? I have been really wanting to pick up something else by Wendell Berry because I loved his essay, Life is a Miracle. I thought it was like fantastic and interesting and very hard to explain. It's kind of about like how science has kind of taken over in America as being a more important study than literature or religious practices and it's kind of like imperialism. It's like moving into those spheres and people are trying to treat everything like a science now but some things are just not sciences and you can't make them sciences because they don't really have like physical evidence. That's not what they're about. They're not about the physical. Like you know there's something about poetry that you can't really quantify. You can't reduce it. It's irreducible. When you try to summarize stories, it never quite sounds as interesting as the book itself is. There's a lot of really important things about faith that have nothing to do with the physical and so if you try and apply it as a science, it just won't work. So that's essentially what the essay was about. And then I have a few kind of runners up books that I would still really enjoy reading if I get a chance. I'm just gonna list these instead of going really in depth. So there's Canticle of Leibowitz, which is like Catholic science fiction. And then there's Return of the Sorcerer by Clark Ashton Smith. And I've already read some of these short stories and I just completely fell in love with their style. And it's short stories, which makes me excited. I don't really have any short story collection on this list. It's a sci-fi classic. And then we have Are Women Human, which is two essays by Dorothy L. Sayers, my favorite author. 
and this is actually from a book of essays called Unpopular Opinions by her. I would love to read all of them. I didn't realize these were from that collection when I bought it. These are about feminism. And another runner-up would be Sorted Sunset by Rosemary Sutcliffe. I've read one or two other books by Rosemary Sutcliffe. Frontier Wolf was one of them, which I just adored. It's about a Roman legion and one soldier in particular, and he is friends with one of the Scots who they are fighting against, one of the tribal headsmen. And it's about their friendship and their growth into men and how they end up having to fight each other. And it was a really good story. And this one is about King Arthur, which is a tale close to my heart. I've always loved the Disney King Arthur versions. It's a historical fiction classic. Oh, wow. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you're gonna read any of those, let me know. And if you've heard of any of them or you have any other recommendations for me for the classics readathon or the Lord of the Rings readathon, do tell me. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Are you planning on joining any readathons yet in 2020? Tell me, do you have a favorite classic? Thanks again for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this, I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button. That helps me get more views, and if you comment, it helps me know what you guys like. And also, if you want to see more of the stuff by me, go ahead and subscribe, and then you can hit the little bell icon to make sure that you're getting notified whenever I put up a new video. Thanks so much, guys. Take care, and I hope you have a wonderful new year celebration and just new year in general.